Good afternoon, guys. Hope uh, everything's going all right right now. I'm just uh, filming this video from my house right now. Just uh, kind of a nice, chilly Sunday afternoon we got over here. Um, all right, so just um, moving along in our exponential functions unit. Um, so this is going to be topic uh, 7.2, which is going to be transformations of exponential functions. So um, I'm just going to show you a quick little Desmos through here. Typically, guys, what we're going to look at is, is y equals ac to the x plus k is going to be the um, kind of the form of all of our transformations for exponential functions that we do. Now, a couple things here. Um, c is going to be the base of a function. Now, what happens over here, c is not technically a transformation over here. But what this does over here, th th this is what the, the, the base of our exponential function is. Now, as you can see, the bigger that C gets, kind of the steeper that this graph gets as well. Okay, so so what what again? What this means is, every time that if our base is is four, every time that x increases by one, our y value is multiplied by four. We go increase x by one again, and we're way all the way up here to sixteen. Okay, so what the base of our exponential does is this is the number that we're multiplying y by every time that x gets increased by one okay now what the k value does the k value is going to affect our vertical asymptote it's going to shift the graph up or down okay so the, the, this red line over here is our vertical asymptote for for this function over here that means the blue graph is going to approach this vertical asymptote but it will never actually touch it or never cross it over here so um, as as k gets uh, get moved up or down um, the asymptote is going to move with the graph like this and that's what our k value does okay now what our a value does is our vertical stretch oh, so, so we'll talk about one more thing for c value if i make c equal to one um well just one to any power to any exponent is always going to be one so this is actually technically is not an exponential function this is going to be a, um, a constant function for y equals 1. Okay, so tech guys, c is not allowed to equal 1. If c is less than 1, we have a function which is going to be an exponential decay. If c is bigger than 1, we have an exponential growth. Now, what you see over here, if we make c less than, um, so if we make c like less than um, 0, so a negative number, we actually don't see anything over here okay so um so because of this like that you know um we're not going to be getting an exponential function for for negative c values okay so c, the c value has to be um greater than one so greater than zero has to be positive um if c is in between zero and one we have an exponential decay if it equals one it's not an exponential function it's just going to be a constant function and if c is bigger than one we have an exponential growth K again is a vertical translation, shifts the graph up and down. Now, what the A value does is our vertical stretch factor. So what it does is going to give us a vertical stretch, and if A is negative, we're going to have a reflection in the x-axis as well. Okay. Now, here's a little pattern we're, we're looking for. If I know my asymptote is 0 and my A value is 1, hopefully you can see that the y-intercept is 1 above my asymptote. Okay, and again, it doesn't matter what I switch my asymptote to, if my, if my asymptote is two, okay, my a value is one, that means that this y-intercept is one above this asymptote. If I increase this a value to two, okay, now my intercept is two above this horizontal asymptote. If I have an a value of negative three, my y-intercept is three below the, the asymptote over here, okay? So this is going to be a pattern that we're going to recognize when we're when we're kind of determining the equation of an exponential function by looking at a graph. So um, looking back to our notes here. So these are the transformations that we have. Now, when I say these are the transformations, you guys, if, if I could look at some for say to y equals 2, to the three x like this. Well, what we can see over here is that this is the same thing as two cubed to the power of x, and two cubed is the same thing as eight to the power of x. So, so point I'm trying to make is anytime that we have a b value, 
we can get rid of the B value, but that means we're going to change this A value or the, the C value over here. Okay. So really, guys, we don't really need to do this because if we just keep C constant, that means we don't really need to worry about this B value as well. If I have an H value in here, say I have 2 to the X, 2 to the X plus 2. Well, this is the same thing as y equals 2 to the x times 2 squared. So we're just kind of applying this exponent rule over here, which is the same thing as 2 squared is 4, 2 to the x over here. So what I'm trying to make is, is any time that we have an h value, we can expand this like this and make the h value into an a value. So really, guys, we don't deal with h values too often because like, you could have an a value or an h value, you could, you could have one or the other, you don't need to have both in the same question over there, okay? So like we saw in the decimals example, when we're doing our exponential functions, we really only deal with a values and k values over here, okay? We don't need to worry about the h and the b values too, um, too often. Uh, you will come across them, guys, we know how transformations work, so, they, so there may be some questions um, which, which do kind of have an H, and a, an H and a B value in them as well. But when we're talking about um, our um, the graphs of these guys, we're only going to deal with these guys over here. Now, what this deals with over here, I say Y equals K is the vertical asymptote. If I go the A value, this is the vertical stretch. And I'm going to put reflection if A is negative. Okay. But one thing we can notice over here is the Y intercept is. K plus A, okay? So I'll show what that means in a second here. In this question, um, we're asked to figure out the um, the exponential function in the form Y equals AC to the X plus K. Now for this guy over here, our vertical asymptote is gonna be Y equals one and that therefore um, our K value is gonna equal one. Now what we notice over here is that this is one and this is two this distance from here to here is one okay so what this means is our equation is going to be y equals one c to the x plus one we don't really need to write this one over here okay now what we don't know right now is we don't know what our um what our c value is now to figure that out we're just going to plug in this point in for x and y and then solve for c so that means 10 equals c squared plus 1. Subtract 1 from both sides, 9 equals c squared. Square root both sides. Guys, what we saw in the decimals demonstration earlier on is that c has to be positive. Has to be positive for these type of functions to work. So our equation for this guy is going to be y equals 3 to the x plus 1. Okay. Similar idea for this question over here. We know that our, because um, a trick over here, it says negative 10 and then negative 12, negative 14, negative 16, negative 18, negative 20. Each tick is worth 2 over here. That means this is y equals negative 8 is the asymptote. Therefore, k equals negative 8. Okay. In this case, our y intercept is 4 below the asymptote. Therefore, a equals negative 4. So our equation is going to be so far, we have y equals negative 4, c to the x, minus 8. And now we just need to figure out what our c value is. So 
So it means four equals C to the negative two. That means four equals one over C squared. That means I'm just gonna multiply both sides by C squared, divide by four. That means C squared equals one quarter. That means C equals one half. Again, normally this would be plus or minus one half, but our base is always gonna be a positive number in this unit. So therefore we have Y equals negative four, one half to the X minus eight. And that is our, that is our equation of this function over here. Okay. All right, so guys, um, this is really just more of a, um, this is really just more of a kind of a transformations type question over here. So we're given a graph of y equals four to the x, and we have to state the domain and range of y equals negative four to two x minus four plus five. So looking at this, first of all, the domain is going to be all real numbers. This graph goes forever to the left and forever to the right. So that's not going to change for any of these transformations over here. Our domain is from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. Now, what's this negative do? This negative is a reflection in the x-axis, and this is a translation up five. So the reflection in the x-axis, so normally, the, originally, this graph is gonna be y is greater than zero, but now with this negative, it's gonna be y is less than zero. And if we go up five, our range is gonna go from negative infinity to five, okay? Now, remember guys, we are not including this value of five because that's where our asymptote is gonna be. So um, um, we are not including this five, so we have a round bracket over here, okay? We're gonna sketch this graph over here. So I'm just gonna write out mapping notation for this. X, Y equals one half X plus two negative y plus five so there's a mapping notation and we're going to apply that to these four points we're, we're given here so we have negative one zero point two five zero one one four and two comma sixteen so applying that to these guys one half times negative one is negative point five plus two is one point five negative 0 0.25 plus five is 4.75. So we got 1.5, 4.75 will be about right here. Um, this guy's gonna become two. Uh, negative one plus five is four, two, four. That'll be right here. Uh, one half times one plus two is 2.5. Uh, negative four plus five is one. 2.5 comma one will be here. And we have uh, two comma 16 will become uh, one half times two is one plus two is three. Negative 16 is negative 11. So negative 16 plus five is negative 11. So we're gonna get uh, three, negative 11, which will be right here. And we know that our asymptote is happening here at y equals five, which is our k value here. So this graph is looking like something like that. All right, guys, very short and sweet topic over here. Hope this makes sense. As always, please send me a message if you have any questions on this. Thanks.